All right, so why don't you tell me what inspired you to run? Uh, what has inspired me to run? Um, I've, I've started getting involved in things about a year ago with the 911 consolidation, and it's just I started getting it's really seeing how government works around here and especially locally, and just a real disconnect between uh, the people in, in power, if you will, and the people that they're there to represent. So I just felt like uh, there needed to be a new perspective, a new voice. Uh, to you know, in the government, where someone that actually listen to what the people want and what the people have to say, and involve them in the in the uh, in the process. So why run for house? Why was that position particularly interesting to you? Um, it was a position that initially I was asked by the uh, by the Lucas County Republican Party to run for. Um, I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. You know, I'm used to a fight. I'm used to an uphill battle, and I thought, I'm I'm I'll take a run at it, um, and just see, you know, throw my hat in the ring. Let's go. So I saw you speaking at the Libertarian Party stuff this weekend, so can you kind of tell us what your journey has been with politics and political party representation and things like Absolutely. that in this race right now? Yes, so my journey has been along the way with, uh, with party politics has uh, not been too pleasant, to be honest with you. Um, I felt like you had to fall in line and you had to, uh, they, you were told what to say, what to think and how to feel. and. Uh, and so it hasn't been real positive in that. I did, and it's felt like the the party politics kind of got in the way of things, uh, got in the way of, of being real and being honest and having integrity and character and what I believe in. Um, and so it just I just had a time where you know when I spoke up uh, publicly on my feelings on the president, uh, it didn't fall in line with the way they wanted things to be said. And so my endorsement was pulled at that point. And so uh, it was liberating, honestly, because then I felt like I didn't have that gag order on me and I could say how I truly felt and what I truly feel. And, um, you know, and really be the voice of the people then and not be held up by party politics. So what would you say your top issues are, your top concerns if you were to be elected? What would you be bringing to the House? Uh, some of my top concerns, honestly, are uh, child abuse and uh, the human trafficking. I know it seems like that's been kind of a, a recent thing that's kind of become more in the news, but um, I've been doing it for several years uh, with a group called Voices for Victims advocating for child abuse. And so I'd really like to see uh, some change in the justice system with that. So that's one of my top things right now that I'd like to work for is getting some, some uh, justice for the, for the child victims. What are other local issues, you know, like issues that Northwest Ohio is facing right now that you think you could make change for at the state level? Um, I think one thing that we're seeing a lot right now, honestly, is are the issues w of ethics and integrity and character. Um, and you, you see that all the way from, from the state most recently, you know, with, with, the, uh, with householder and the bribery. Um, and you're starting to see it locally also. You saw it on both sides of the aisle. And I, I think that's one big thing that uh, bringing to the government that I'd like to bring is that integ integrity, the character, and the transparency, and being available to the people to actually um, to be, be available to them, to you know, hear what they have to say. So integrity, character, transparency, and, and accountability. What do you have to say to other Republicans who might be hesitant to vote for you because of the draft endorsement? What do you want them to know about you? What I want them to know about me, the main thing really is don't, and I don't think anybody really should be straight down the ticket just because of that letter after someone's name. Look at the candidate. Listen to what they have to say and what they have to offer. Vote for the person that you feel most ma most matches your beliefs and your, your thoughts. And, and it's not always about party. Party gets in the way. So let's take that out of the way and let's look at the candidate. All right. Anything else you want to add? Anything else you know? I'm just really excited about it. And one of the biggest things that I am so proud of is that I have been able to gain the, the support from the left, from the right, and from the middle. Uh, that regardless of the party, that there are people that, um, you know, are, are feel like they're being heard uh, from all sides. And I really appreciate that. I'm really, really happy about that. And I just love uh, being able to be out there with, with, with people. And okay, so just the last thing, mm -hmm. um, besides the 911 consolidation stuff where you started getting active, mm -hmm. um, what other things have you done in your life that you feel you know, qualify you well for, for an elected position like this? I'm very active in the community as a whole. Um, aside from the 911 consolidation, I, with Voices for Victims for several years, uh, I also I deployed with the Red Cross for that. I was a volunteer firefighter for about 10 years, so I have a, a unique perspective in that. 
Um, just during this pandemic, most recently, we started seeing a need and a desire for uh, cleaning up in the parking lots. So we put together a group and, and myself as well as others went out in the parking lots and picked up trash. So there's no job that's too big or too small for me. I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So just being very active in the, in the community and being seen in the community, you know, um, that's one thing I've even heard from, heard from supporters that it's nice to see someone actually out in the community. So that's, that's what I feel qualifies me.